Basketball rule number three. Never let anyone lower your goals. Others' expectations of you are determined by their limitations of life. The sky is your limit, sons. Always shoot for the sun, and you will shine. Josh's play-by-play. The Red Rockets defending county champions are in the house tonight. They brought their whole school. This place is oozing crimson. They're beating us 29-28 to with less than a minute to go. I am at the free throw line. All I have to do is make both shots to take the lead. The first is up. And click. It hits the rim. The second looks real good. Missed again? But Bonnie grabs a rebound. A fresh 24 on the shot clock. Number 33 on the Rockets. Strips the ball from Rondi. This game is like ping pong with all the back and forth. He raced down court for an easy lay. Oh, Houston, we have a problem. I catch him and slap the ball on the glass. You ever seen anything like this from a seventh grader? Didn't think so. Me and JB are stars in the making. The Rockets full court press me, but I get it across the line just in time. Ten seconds left. I pass the ball to JB. They double team him in a hurry. Don't want to give him an easy three. Five seconds left. JB lobs the ball. I rise like a Learjet. Seventh graders aren't supposed to dunk, but guess what? I snatch the ball out of the air and slam, yam, in your mug. Who's the man? Let's look at that again. Oh, I forgot. This is junior high. No instant replay until college. Well, with game like this, that's where me and JB are headed. The new girl comes up to me after the game, her smile ocean wide, my mouth wide shut. Nice dunk, she says. Thanks. Y'all coming to the gym over the Thanksgiving break? Probably. Cool. By the way, why'd you cut your locks? They were kind of cute. Standing right behind me, Vondi giggles. Kind of cute, he mocks. Then JB walks up. Hey, JB. Great game. I brought you some iced tea, she says. Is it sweet, he asks. And just like that, JB and the new girl are sipping sweet tea together. I missed three free throws tonight. Each night after dinner, Dad makes us shoot free throws until we make ten in a row. Tonight, he says... I have to make 15. Basketball rule number four. If you miss enough of life's free throws, you will pay in the end. Having a mother is good when she rescues you from free throw attempt number 36, your arms as heavy as sea anchors. But it can be bad when your mother is a principal at your school. Bad in so many ways. It's always education this and education that. After a double overtime basketball game, I only want three things. Food, bath, sleep. The last thing I want is education. But each night, Mom makes us read. Don't know how he does it, but JB listens to his iPod at the same time, so he doesn't hear me when I ask him if Mitt's sweet tea is his girlfriend. He claims he's listening to French classical, that it helps him concentrate. Yeah, right. Sounds more like Jay-Z and Kanye in Paris, which is why when mom and dad start arguing, he doesn't hear them either. Mom shouts, get a checkup. Hypertension is genetic. I'm fine. Stop hyposting me, baby. Dad whispers, don't play me, Charles. This isn't a basketball game. I don't need a doctor, I'm fine. Your father didn't need a doctor either. He was alive when he went into the hospital. So now you're afraid of hospitals? Nobody's afraid, I'm fine, it's not that serious. Fainting is a joke, is it? I saw you, baby, and I got a little excited. Come give me a kiss. Don't do that. It's nothing, I just got a little dizzy. You love me? Like summer love, short nights. Get a checkup then. The only cure I need is you. I'm serious about this, Chuck. The only doctor I need is Dr. Crystal Bell. Now come here. And then there's silence. So I put the pillow over my head. Because when they stop talking, I know what that means. Ugh. Hypertension. Noun. A disease, otherwise known as high blood pressure. As in... Mom doesn't want dad eating salt because too much of it increases the volume of blood, which can cause hypertension. 
as in hypertension, can affect all types of people, but you have a higher risk if someone in your family has had the disease, as in, I think my grandfather died of hypertension? To fall asleep, I count and recount the 37 strands of my past in the box beneath my bed. Why we only ate salad for Thanksgiving. Because every year grandma makes a big delicious dinner, but this year, two days before Thanksgiving, she fell off her front stoop on the way to buy groceries. So Uncle Bob, my mom's younger brother, who smokes cigars and thinks he's a chef because he watches food TV, decided he would prepare a feast for the whole family, which consisted of macaroni with no cheese, concrete hard cornbread, and a greenish looking ham that prompted mom to ask if he had any eggs to go along with it. Which made grandma laugh so hard she fell again, this time right out of her wheelchair. How do you spell trouble? During the vocabulary test, JB passes me a folded note to give to Miss Sweet Tea, who sits at the desk in front of me and who looks pretty tight in her pink denim capris and matching sneaks. Someone cracks a window, a cold breeze whistles. Her hair dances to its own song. In this moment, I forget about the test and the note till JB hits me in the head with his number two. Somewhere between camaraderie and imbecile, I tap her beige bare shoulder with the note. At that exact moment, the teacher's head creeps up from his desk, his eyes directly on me. I'm a fly caught in a web. What do I do? Hand over the note and bears JB. Or hide the note, take the heat. I look at my brother. His forehead's a factory of sweat. Miss Sweet Tea smiles. Gorgeous pink lips and all. I know what I have to do. Bad news. I sit in mom's office for an hour reading brochures and pamphlets about the Air Force and the Marines. She's in and out handling principal stuff. A parent protesting her daughter's F, a prank substitute teacher crying, a broken window. After an hour, she finally sits in the chair next to me and says, The good news is, I'm not going to suspend you. The bad news, Josh, is that neither Duke nor any other college accepts cheaters. Since I can't seem to make a decent man out of you, perhaps the Air Force or the Marines can. I want to tell her I wasn't cheating, that this is all JB and Miss Sweet Tea's fault, that this will never happen again, that Duke is the only thing that matters. But a water pipe bursts in the girl's bathroom. So I tell her I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Then I head off to my next class. Gym class. Supposed to be about balls. Volleyballs, basketballs, softballs, soccer balls, sometimes sit-ups, and always sweat. But today, Mr. Lane tells us not to dress out. He's standing in front of the class, a dummy laid out on the floor. Plastic faceless torso cut in half. I'm not paying attention to anything he's saying or to the dummy because I'm watching Jordan pass notes to Miss Sweet Tea and I wonder what's in the notes. Josh, why don't you come up here and assist me? What, huh? The class snickers and before I know it, I'm tilting the dummy's head back, pinching his nose, blowing in his mouth and pumping his chest 30 times. All the while, thinking that if life is really fair, one day I'll be the one writing notes to some sweet girl and JB will have to squash his lips on some dummy's sweaty mouth. 